Cheers guys, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. Coming to you from the idyllic New Jersey countryside. Flew in the other night to Newark. I highly recommend flying into Newark at night as it's much more difficult to see anything. All kidding aside, New Jersey is actually quite scenic and beautiful once you get outside of the cities. So enjoying my time here in New Jersey. Okay, it is the Thanksgiving season, and that means a couple of things. First is it's big time cooking season, big meals with family and friends. And also, it also means Black Friday sales. Check out this headline I saw on Yahoo Finance. Retail earnings show rampant discounting and holiday shoppers are waiting to pounce. I am one of those holiday shoppers waiting to pounce on these Black Friday deals. As I've mentioned many times, I buy all of my own equipment around here to review and do features on. So I tend to load up on these Black Friday sales, typically some of the best prices of the entire season. Uh, last year, I think I spent about 1200 bucks on stuff. And sometimes you'll find deals at places you wouldn't normally think of as online outlets for, for kitchen gear. Um, I found some deals on Stobe enamel cast iron at Saks Fifth Avenue uh, last year. They have some deals from time to time. Uh, Costco, I believe, has some Black Friday deals already going, some deals on uh, all clad D5 sets if you have a Costco membership. Amazon's gonna have a big sale coming up. Debouye, we really, really like Debouye around here. I love their carbon steel. They're gonna have a big sale starting next week. Make sure you check back here and I will have links below and I'll probably blast out an update once that sale goes live because this is going to be one of the best times of the year to buy any of that Debouye carbon steel. But let's all be on the lookout and if you run across some fantastic deals, make sure you post them below the video and we'll see if we can blast them out to everybody. I put up that big review of the Lodge 15 inch carbon steel paella pan this past week. Uh, getting a lot of good feedback about that. Several people wrote in and asked about using tomatoes in those paella pans. Let's see, Constantine Flux, the Bokalul, I don't know how to pronounce that, and Double Dog Dare, they all wrote in and asked about using tomatoes and acidic ingredients in those paella pans when you make paella. Well, my paella expert over in Valencia, Spain, Joaquin, who sent me all those tips, oddly enough, he says that over there, and this is gonna sound crazy, they don't worry about seasoning their carbon steel paella pans. Around here, we obsess over it, especially when we're gonna be doing high temp sears of meat. We want non-stick eggs. We really pay attention to our seasoning. Over there, with the carbon steel paella pans, they just don't worry about it. They just wash the pans. He said they don't even put it on the heat to dry it. They just wash the pans, uh, wipe them down, and put a little oil on there, and just don't worry about it with the tomatoes. So maybe this is a, an argument to have more than one carbon steel skillet. Maybe you got a paella pan that you just don't worry about. Then you got another one for eggs and that type thing where you really do kind of worry about the seasoning. But I thought that was very interesting. They just don't worry about the seasoning. Lou Cheese You Sleaze, what a name. Lou Cheese You Sleaze wrote in and said he uses that lodge as a pizza pan. Hadn't thought of that, but it is a pretty big pan. You could probably make a good pizza in that. Uh, more about carbon steel, someone named Sean wrote in and asked stainless steel versus carbon steel, which one do I prefer? Well, we've gotten into this a few times in the past. I prefer that three pan strategy. If I could only choose one pan, I would go with a good stainless steel because it's much more versatile. You can do tomato sauces, acidic ingredients, you can brown, you can do eggs, you can do all kinds of things. It may not be perfect at anything, but you get a lot of versatility. I advocate though for the three pan strategy. I would start with a good stainless steel then I would add a cast iron and then a carbon steel. If you got those three pans, you can do darn near anything you need to do in a frying pan on your stovetop. PM Wheatley wrote in about reseasoning carbon steel. Once you've had to, if you've ever had to nuke a pan and start over or really give a pan a good cleaning, he asked, why don't we use the potato peels oil and salt method when we re-season like we do for those initial seasonings with mat for skillets. Why don't we do that? That potato peels, oil and salt method for seasoning carbon steel, that is only for the initial seasoning when a pan is brand new and only for mat for pans. You can use it with other brands of pans, but it's really specifically for mat for pans. 
and you do not have to do that ever again. Once you do that initial seasoning, pan is brand new, potato peels, oil, and salt, you don't have to do that for maintenance seasonings on down the road. It's uh, really in depth, it takes a while, it's kind of a mess. Don't worry about that, just do touch up maintenance seasonings from then on. Uh, Joshua Mark wrote in and asked if I have any updates on those new uh, map for models at Amazon and other places. I think some of these sizes, uh, the, uh, the new models are available. And the last I heard, I haven't talked to Matt for in about three weeks or a month now, but I think a couple of the sizes were available now and the others are gonna fill in and it's probably gonna be January and later for, for more of the sizes to fill in with those new models. The way you can tell though, is when you look at the pans online, look at the handles. And if you can see that map for logo in the handle, that should be the new updated pan. But all sizes are not available yet. You'll just have to be diligent and look and see before you order one. We've rapidly got Thanksgiving approaching. I will put up another link. I did this video a couple years ago, but I will relink that video I did on Southern cornbread dressing if you guys want to give that a try. It's fairly in depth. You have to make cornbread, you have to make homemade biscuits, and those become ingredients into the final dressing. But I think well worth the effort especially since my mom usually does all the work. But absolutely delicious Southern cornbread dressing if you wanna do some in-depth cooking and give that a try. Okay, if you run across any of those screaming Black Friday cookware deals, make sure you post those below so we can all jump on them. I will blast out some more as they come in. Hope to see you guys at least one more time, one more pancast before Thanksgiving. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancast.